We are happy to have you joining us today. We're gonna to talk for a little while this afternoon about Operation Escape Lab and what we did in our uh, College of Nursing Sims Center and maybe hopefully get you thinking about what, how you might be able to use it in your setting. So I'm gonna hit the slide, Sherry. I'll let you. Yep. I'll let you talk, just, just talk. <laughs> Um, again, as Ann said, welcome to Escape Lab. When the students came in this semester, this is the first thing they got to see. So hopefully, you know, in, instilled some nervousness. All right, so back to the objectives. Um, be patient and um, learn from your mistakes in Sam. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I don't know if I cut off before, I was encouraging people to ask questions. We don't have a big group um, and we appreciate any feedback, comments, critiques, and just want everybody to enjoy the presentation. Hopefully if we can stay connected. Um, we're gonna discuss some of the concepts of um, escape, escape rooms in healthcare education. Uh, and then we're, we're gonna hope that you participate in this escape lab that's gonna be held virtually. I'm just gonna warn you there's some clues that are gonna be coming up, so pay attention. You will be quizzed at the end. Um, and just develop some ideas that you can bring into your own experience and your own educational objectives. Uh, some of you guys know me because I talk a lot um, and get around a lot. Um, and so uh, my name is Sherry Kearney. What you might not know is that I went to school back east at a small uh, all women's college in, in Troy, New York called Russell Sage College. Um, I worked in psych for 15 years, which um, has enabled me to work with a lot of, never mind, I'll skip that part. Um, uh, but I got into sim while in psych, I started to be the workplace violence uh, educator um, and skills lab educator and just not skills lab, but skills educator and um, just overall teacher for most of the staff there. But I got tired of the bruises that I came home with being real and being bit by six year olds. So now I get to make everything myself. Um, I started working in the sim lab about two years ago. Um, some of you guys know that I enjoy running and bike here and I'm kind of obsessed with my dogs and other people's dogs. That's why I think I get along with Anne. Yep, so there's me. So I, that, well, that's not me. That's Gracie. <laughs> yeah, so education wise, BSN, got my master's in education. And then I got a doctorate in education not too many years ago, just about five. Um, I have been working in simulation for several years now, and I love teaching with simulation. Um, and that's relevant because this lends itself to um, simulation as well as some other things. But um, I did um, become a certified health, certified, certified health education, help what's the s certified simulation care simulation, simulation educator. educator there we go in uh 2014 kind of back there when they first did that and i've done that since then and gracie is our college of nursing therapy dog in training and is currently sleeping at my feet so hopefully she'll stay there okay so that's just a little bit about us um, if you're not familiar with the Sim Lab, I was looking at who's on here. We have um, mostly College of Nursing people, it looks like. Um, but we have an amazing simulation center. So um, we kind of divide it into what we call advanced simulation and the basic lab. Uh, and advanced simulation is more um, scenario based. Uh, students work together to take care of patients, make decisions, do what they need to do, practice procedures and skills that they've learned. Um, this is a picture of our basic simulation lab, um, which we are so fortunate to have this beautiful space for students. Um, there's actually two sides with 10 beds each. Uh, and so our foundations of nursing course, the very first semester students are in the nursing program. We spend a lot of time, um, this is actually considered a clinical course because they spend a lot of time in the lab um, learning skills, learning procedures, uh, learning how to communicate with patients. We use a lot of standardized patients, so they get that aspect as well. Um, doing things a little bit different currently, COVID times, but um, 
hopefully not um, compromising. I, I don't feel like we've compromised any of the education that the students are getting, even though they're kind of anxious that that's the case. I think we're still doing a really good job of providing them um, the basics of the foundations that they're going to need for moving forward. So that's kind of why that's kind of our setup. And that sort of um, led us to um, trying the escape lab here. So my mantra in simulation based education is and I share this with the students all the time. We come here. We expect to make mistakes and learn from them. You know, they come here and they feel like they don't know anything and they should know everything, which I can never figure out because then why would they be here if they already knew everything, right? Um, so we try to make this an atmosphere where they can try stuff, figure things out for themselves. I'm all about learner-based education, not um, giving it to them. And sometimes it takes us a good several weeks of the semester for them to go along with that, to figure out that they are going to be doing the learning um, on their own with our help. We're not going to tell them what they need to do. That's a, I think that we spend a lot of first semester doing that. It's a lot different than perhaps prerequisite courts, and I'm sure it's like this in every other healthcare um, program as well. You know, you, you do your prereqs and whatever, you study and you take your tests and you, you do things to get grades, whereas now we're trying to um, help students understand that they're learning things and they need to know these things in order to keep their patients safe, right? Totally different than what grade you get in your course, okay? So we try to give them lots of opportunities to try and fail, and if they, sorry, fail, I don't even like the word fail, we don't use the word fail, we, do, we have do-overs in our lab. So if they can't, um, do it the first time around, then we practice some more. And that's okay, you can go to the next slide because it, um, this is all kind of based on deliberate practice theory. Um, if you're not familiar with it, um, Erickson um, started this back in the 90s. Um, 2015 in the references, there's something that's more focused on medical education, but um, the idea, and, and we're clearly not trying to make world-class performances, or performers, but the idea that, um, you know, you do the one and done or do one, learn one, do one, see one, or do, however that goes, that whole theory doesn't really work with beginners, right? So we have all these novice learners, um, they need to practice things over and over, and so that's how we have our lab, our practice, or our weekly lab is set up for them to practice um, different skills, different procedures um, at different stations within the lab and they need to include all of these things. We need to do them over and over. We need to have clear objectives about why they're doing what they're doing. They need to be challenging and we'll talk about that in a little bit about challenging but not too much. Um, faculty are here to give that feedback um, and sometimes it's not very much fun. Practice can just be not that much fun. So that kind of feeds into this, our idea about using a, an escape lab as well. I'm gonna go next. Um, the other part of deliberate practice that we have implemented and I feel really strongly about is mastery learning um, and how, that, how those goes together, how those go together. Um, you'll see that minimum passing standard, MPS, um, really important that we set those, we agree to those. I'm sure in every college program, whatever, um, you have minimum passing standards, whether it's on an OSCE or however, however you do your assessment. Um, that very much ties into deliberate practice and mastery learning. Um, you, and you just give students the opportunity to continue to practice. Uh, until they reach that minimum passing standard. We have control over the curriculum. Um, go ahead and you can go forward, Jerry. I can make different colors. And <laughs> There you go. This is really important. I actually um, heard Dr. McGahey speak at a conference once and the whole background, the whole basis of mastery learning is that, that nobody gets to be mediocre, right? And we always ask, I always ask students, who wants to be the mediocre nurse? Of course, hopefully nobody wants to be that. And none of us want 
that person taking care of us, that's for sure. So what we strive for, um, excellence for all is awesome, but at least there's that minimum passing standard that everybody needs to reach. Okay, and go ahead and, and people are gonna reach that at different times. So this is just kind of a graphic. Thankfully in, in health sciences, I'm pretty sure that goes for everybody, we have motivated learners. They're usually here because they really want to do this. And so that part of it is, um, is really nice to have. We do, we start with a pretest, um, and that is just basic knowledge where students are at. Then we have control over the curriculum. So this is going to be the method that how are we going to help them learn? Then they do a post test, which for lots of us is called an OSCE, um, obstruct objective structured clinical. We call them evaluations rather than examinations, but same idea. And then depending on how that goes, they either pass, which I hate that word, but they reach the minimum standard and they're good to go on, or they fail, which I really hate that word. And then we figure out how to get them what they need to practice some more in order to reach that minimum passing standard. So, okay. Um, this other, go ahead, is there another? Is, oh, there it is. One more, one more, just put the arrow on there. Yep, so this is what we're after, right? Is that sweet spot where they're, they're not panicked because they don't know what they're doing and they, we don't really want them comfortable either because then, um, you know, the, the zone of proximal development is that green area where between being comfortable and being panicked. And I don't know about you all, but there's a lot of panic in the lab, especially the first Few some or first few weeks, um, and there is out in clinical too, right? I mean, this is all part of what we do. It can be um, pretty scary when you don't know what you're doing. So that's what we do, and this is why we decided to try an escape lab because it is one more way to help students practice, and um, hopefully it makes sense we've tied it back to the educational pedagogy and principles that it wasn't just something that we both went oh this is really cool we should try this i actually did put thought into it so uh what's next i'm not sure where we're at oh and one last if you haven't looked at um d finks stuff i mean hopefully what we're trying to do is create significant learning experiences and that's um to me this is just everything we do in um, the nursing program, especially at the very beginning when we're trying to help them learn how to learn, how to learn differently so that they can actually bring that stuff back when they need it, that they have the foundational knowledge, they know how to apply it, um, we can integrate it in different um, settings. Um, I heard one of the talks this morning, I think it was Aaron, I can't remember who was talking about doing quizzes, but um, how to do things, learn things so that you can apply them in different contexts for sure. Okay, hopefully the caring piece um, and the human dimension, um, we I think do a good job of doing that with our, by using our standardized patients and stuff, so. Okay, on to the key principles of a sim escape room, which is probably why you came here. So I'm just gonna say, um, right up front. Lairdal has some great resources. Um, this came right off their website, um, how simulation escape groups can make learning stick. Um, they have a whole workbook. So if this is something that you're really interested in, um, in trying, I hope you are. Um, they have a lot of great resources in there and I've got them at the end for you. But Basically, you want to have some kind of story. You want to make it as realistic environment as you can, which, you know, we have the, that's why it fits perfectly in simulation because we have, that's what we do, right? Um, you want to have some kind of a time limit. Um, and obviously we're just going to say it over and over and over again. A lot of these things depend on your objectives. You have to know what your objectives are. What do you want them to get out of this thing? Um, it's not just fun and games, although it is um, fun, but there you have to know, just like anything else we plan, what your objectives are up front so that that um, is going to make sense. It has to be appropriate level of difficulty, back to that zone of proximal 
um, learning and then uh, some kind of a debrief, just the, the reflection in and on action that we do in simulation. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going back to. So hopefully in your mind, you're starting to think about how this might work for you, um, how you might be able to use it in whatever your program is. Um, we did an escape lab. So in our lab each week, we have nine stations for students to, um, to rotate through. They spend 20, well now 20 minutes in a station. Uh, and so we have a designated practice lab on the weeks when we have advanced simulation. And so rather than just having students come in and practice, which we normally do, and we try to make that fun, but this is an alternative, um, actually a planned thing that is totally different from what they're used to. Uh, and, and yeah, so that's, that's why we call it an escape lab instead of an escape room. Um, you can do a room and lots of different ways to do this, but ours was based on several different stations. Take it away, Sherry. So again, this morning, I want to talk while Anne was talking. Um, uh, why did we choose the escape lab? Um, kind of coming back to what Anne was saying is putting the students in that zone of proximal development, if I'm saying all of that correct. Um, and so we've, with the escape lab, um, before COVID, they had to team up. So there was a big a component of it that had communication and collaboration. So now they have to learn how to collaborate with themselves, which I think is probably a good skill these days. Um, and then also a competition. We had a timer going, um, the students signed in um, and were kind of really zealous to get going once they saw what was going on. And competition breeds motivation, again, putting them in that area where they can learn best. Uh, I did talk about time pressure decision making. And of course, um, this is where I come in, I think. Um, not that Anne's not fun, but um, I was here to try to make things more fun. And well, also to try something new. So now we're entering the portion of this where you guys get to participate. So I expect participation because I know where you all are somehow. Um, so we're going to form a team of one during escape lab during uh, before COVID. Uh, it was a team of two. Um, and you, I need you guys to all come up with an alias. I'd appreciate it if you could share it in the chat. Um, also, just so you know, the students were really fond of team catheter. So if anybody needs to take that, it's a real pisser of a name. Um, and then we're going to review the operation the guide to Operation Escape Lab. So you might wanna get a no notepad, label it confidential, because there's gonna be clues throughout the thing to open the quiz at the end. And if you answer all of the questions in the quiz correctly, you too can get a certificate of completion and escape our virtual lab. So your mission, should you choose to, so the, the students got something similar to this, as Anne was talking about, there was 10 stations and in each station, there was a puzzle piece that they could put together if they were able to find all the clues on the mannequin. We'll, we'll, we'll show you some examples of what they had to do. Um, and there, so in our thing, uh, there'll be clues to open, like I said, the quiz, and then they'll be revealed during the presentation. I will point out there might be a letter on this slide itself. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. I hope the Zoom is still working. And I hope you guys have a little bit of fun with this. Um, I'm not gonna go through each one of the setups because I'm gonna, there's a video for it, but if you, in the presentation, the slides have how we set up each different setup on this particular three stations that we picked for this presentation. So I'm gonna go away so Elle can share the video. Welcome to station one of the virtual escape lab. Um, I'm going to go over where we put the clues and some of the reasons why we picked where we put certain clues. So I have my setup guide. I think we all probably know what one of these are. And so I had the station already set up. And so now I'm just going to go right to the portion where I have the escape lab instructions. So here we have, I'm going to place an H. I already have these on. The, the volume screen. is low. Um, and we're going to put the H underneath the mannequins 
gown, what we got is some feedback is that from some of the instructors is that the students were not pulling down the gown to get a uh, skin on skin when they were doing uh, listening for sounds, breath sounds, and heart sounds. So I'm gonna just put that there, cover her back up. So it's not as exciting without seeing the mannequin, but I can kind of talk through some of these. Um, and I'm sorry to get to see the, the fancy video that I made before I got my COVID haircut. Um, and so one of the things that we, that they practice in escape lab or in, pra in practice lab, open lab, um, is a head to toe. And one of the things that we were noticing that some of the instructors and included had mentioned that the students don't necessarily pull the, um, the gown down to get skin on skin when they do, and I'm not even gonna to try to say the word. Um, and so we put an H underneath the torso, underneath the gown of the mannequin, right? Uh, obviously checking identification is, is super important. So we put a clue on the name band. And then we placed one, the, uh, in this case, the patient had an injury to their left hip and they need, and so the a part of the thing that they would do is check the incision. So we put a letter there and then one of my absolute favorites is we put a D under the sock, um, hence the head to toe or head to foot, however you wanna look at it. Um, and a lot of the students would come out and they would ask me, we can't find the last letter. And I would ask, did you look under the sock? And it was amazing, amazement. They went back and they found the letter and there was much joy, especially for me. Um, and so that, that was one of the uh, stations. Um, Okay. No, that's not the box for that, but this is one of the boxes that they had to open to get a clue. Um, the next one was a Foley insertion. Um, and so there was a plastic box there and the clues in this case were placed under the left buttocks um, in the, by the Foley strap. And it, again, on the name band, kind of reemphasized the importance of checking safe, uh, your, your five rights. Um, station three, that we picked for uh, the virtual presentation was IV fluid and pump management. Um, and here I used the advanced clues of 911. Um, and we placed the nine and the alcohol white box, which I found fascinating because I learned things like scrub the hub. And I was very excited about that because the students were thrilled to find it when they went back and actually did the practice, practiced the administration the way they should or shouldn't. I don't know if I said should say should. Um, or expected to. Um, and so I had a, some student come back and thank me for just rem those reminders. Um, we placed one on the channel pump and one in the, and a clue in the drug book. And so then they were able to open some of these fancy things that led them to this fancy binder, which you guys are gonna get to do a quiz here soon too. It's hard to show display options and do this. So this is some of the feedback we got from the students. Um, that they really enjoyed it, enjoyed get, being able to get to go pra practice a lot of things. Um, you know, they had a goal to work, work towards. Um, they uh, wish they could do it every week, but, you know, I think they might get tired of making the same puzzle and I'd have to come up with more puzzles. Um, just that it was a lot of fun. Um, and some of the, the feedback we got from the instructors were just that the students were more engaged um, actively working on all of their skills, not as much chatting. Um, and it's hard because the students wanna hang out and chat as well. Um, and so this was a nice way to motivate them. Um, for those of you who were here at the beginning of the presentation, um, they also got to listen to some of my favorite 80s music, um, which I'm pretty sure helped them learn more. Um, and this is kind of the certificate they got at the end when they were able to complete the all 10 stations and the doshas calculation. Um, and they got to open this fancy box that made lights go off and all this fun stuff. And Ann and I actually got more fancy lights for this semester, so I'm excited to try them. Um, this leads into some of the lessons that we've learned. Um, locks are hard. We learned that not all locks are created equal. Um, and this was an important plot point when planning an escape lab or an escape room. And also <clears throat> we'll touch briefly on um, planning on a budget. These are some of our, a combination of some of our older stuff and some of the newest stuff we got because um, we 
Got a grant? A little one. Um, which leads into some of the, the little budget nuggets that we had. Oh, with the, with the um, sorry guys. Uh, I just realized that A, nobody has shared their team name of one. And B, three of the clues are embedded in the um, video that we can't watch. Uh, so buy right, buying right the first time, as I said, locks, were, locks are hard. We, I found these little fancy dot looking locks for the first round of Escape Lab. And um, not one of them made it past the second round of Escape Lab. Um, so that got exciting. Uh, but we bought bigger batter locks. I have a bigger battery lock somewhere. Um, and so just kind of kind of paying attention to that. Um, you consider using stuff that you already have, um, considering uh, putting things into scenarios that are already in existence. As we I took a practice lab that I believe that you guys have done and had been doing for quite some time, or a while at least, and we just kind of built it off of that. Um, and you don't have to go all out to get started. Like I said, we started with just the things that we had and just really small budget. And are there teaching or other smaller grants that might apply that you can help get, get you started on these things? Okay, so as you're getting started on this idea, I put a couple of things, a couple of comments in the chat there. Um, you know, we did it in this way. We're lurking with very um, beginner students. And so obviously our objectives um, may be lots different than what you wanna do. Um, I know this, a common escape room has been to like to, around um, sepsis protocols. So to bring it, whether they're doing them in situ in the hospital or whether you do it wherever, um, bring in people together to figure out how how to implement a sepsis protocol, for instance, um, and they have to do things in order to um, to get to be successful and, and finish the finish the task. Um, in the references, there's also a really great resource about different kinds of puzzles. There's actually, I think, 11 puzzles in there, um, just different ways to set things up. We chose to use locks on boxes and whatnot because that's the way we, um, that's just the way we did it. But there are lots of, don't um, limit yourself to how to, how to make this, how to, how to make it work. Um, I, am planning to use this in the classroom. You can do virtual escape rooms by using um, like Word pages, whatever Word docs that progress. Um, and so there's lots of ways to do this. So I hope that you're starting to think about one, where this might fit for you and two, how you might be able to get going on it. Um, I think a really important thing for me was finding Sherry to team up with on this. Um, it just happened to be, I'd been thinking about it for a while anyway. Um, and then she came back from a conference where she had seen it and she was all excited about it. And so um, the skills and the stuff that she brings as a simulation technologist um, is different than what I have as an educator. And so I just think it's really um, helpful to have that collaboration. And it can take as much time and energy as you want to put into it. It can, it can eat you up if you want to do it that way. But um, hopefully that's not the case. Um, always, always, always goes back to the objectives though. Just like everything else we do. You got to know what you're, I'm a big fan of backward planning. And so you got to know what it is you want students to get out of it. Um, for us, really, in this situation, it was just about, they were still spending the same amount of time in the lab practicing things. So for us, it was more of an engagement, um, a different, just a different way to present the same, the same thing. Whereas if your objective is to get people to know how to do a new protocol or to collaborate on some particular issue or whatever it is, um, it's just really important that you are really, really clear with your objectives, what you want students to take away, and then just be creative and have fun, but don't go overboard. What's next? Um, um, you want to talk a little about locks some more. <laughs> if anybody really wants to hear more about locks, <laughs> um, I think I got more into it than I did 
the last because of the video. Um, but probably the other takeaway with box, okay, is that a word lock is not a word lock. I thought I could write things on the word lock, but no, no, you can't. Um, and this is where some of the other things can come into uh, doing sequence based um, escape labs or an escape program where the students have to find a uh, paper that will then indicate what their next step is to do in a protocol. Um, so you don't always have to use lots. I chose to use, use them because I have a love-hate relationship with them. Um, and then one of the other things that we learned the first time we did it, I think we learned something new every time mm -hmm. and sometimes even in the middle of it. <laughs> so uh, one of the things we did the first time is with the uh, uh, open lab, students were able to come at any time and take their two hours. What happened, what happened is we had students that would take a lot over the time and that was a little frustrating and kind of have a little bit more backup. So for the second one, we did appointments and that seemed to work a lot better. Um, and then obviously we can't allow students to pair up now, but you know, you can just pair up with your imaginary nurse friend now, I guess. And oh, but we can and we will. <laughs> with the proper PPE, we will be having partners, yay! And, and, and much joy was had. Um, and, you know, we, and also to start small because I think when I came back from the conference that Anne referenced, I wanted something with a smoke machine and students locked together, you know, and I'm, I'm not sure coming back to the right level, I don't think that first semester students are gonna be in a smoke filled ER trying to solve all the, the problems of the world. So Anne put me back in my place and said, maybe not that much. And so we kind of worked and tried to stay again, true to our objectives. And again, um, I can't stress how much I think we've learned something new every time. And even sometimes as students went through the station, um, kind of like the student that broke the lock because she just pushed too hard. Um, and that wasn't even one of the bad locks. Um, and then, you know, just always be ready to try something else or just a punt. Okay, I think I've already talked to, you can tell, I think objectives are really important. Um, you just, if you don't know what your objectives are, you got nowhere to go, right? So um, it's not about getting lost in all the details. Um, it, it is really, we kind of um, alluded to that this lab would be did, different. We didn't give students a whole bunch of um, pre-briefing about how it was gonna happen. Um, they signed up, they got here, and then Sherry does a little pre-briefing at the beginning so they know how it's gonna go. Um, but um, really important that they're on board. And, uh, and to be honest, that's one of the things about this. It's not hard to get students on board with this. You know, it's something different. Um, and I would say even if you're thinking about, um, you know, we, we tried it in a staff, we, in a faculty meeting. Um, it, it's just something different, right? You, it's the same, you're trying to get to the same objective, it's just a different way to get there. So um, always, always thinking about what's, what you wanna do the next time around for sure. Uh, and, I, and I don't want you to feel like you need to spend a bunch of money, you just don't. You, you need to just be creative and, and have some fun and get going on it. So now what? Is this me? Am I talking still? We want you to commit. We'll so commit. If, if you've been thinking about how to maybe do this, um, just think about how to do it small scale and you don't need to do an entire lab. That was a pretty big undertaking. Um, but think about how you might be able to use it um, for a certain topic or a scenario you're already doing or something in the lab that you already um, have really strong objectives for like I said, just a different way to get to the same thing. Um, just trying something new. And hopefully, I mean, I don't know, it, you know, it's fun for us to try something different as well, right? Rather than just, just doing it the same old way. So I think that takes us into the point where we want to throw you out in your breakout rooms. Sherry, can you hit the next? Yep. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna, so we're just gonna throw it out there for, there's only a few of us, just put you in for a few minutes. Um, 
does anybody have any questions before you go out to talk about what ideas might work for this? Any thoughts or questions that you want to share? Just please just unmute yourself and talk if you do. Well, I guess I was just curious how long we'll have in our breakout room so we can keep ourselves on track. Well, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. What do you think you want? I mean, we're such small groups that I don't really know how this is gonna. Um, I'm gonna say 15. Okay. And if you want to come back before that, then come back earlier, and I then we'll just we'll just regroup and go from there. Anything else? Anything about how to do it? I'm curious. Has anybody tried? Anybody um, done this on your own? I assume you're here because you're at least thinking about wanting to do it, maybe? Or you just really wanted to see what we've been doing in the basement? Yeah, that's okay, too. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just going to hit breakout random. How many of us are there? There's. I'm just going to put us in two groups, and Sherry and I will hop in one of each, and will that work? I guess my question too would be what are our objectives? Your objectives are to talk about an idea that you have that might work in this format that maybe you've been thinking about, but you're not really sure you want to go there <laughs> or yeah. And like I said, it doesn't have to be just with students. You know, we, I, yeah. I thought it, we did it in a, in a faculty meeting. I thought it was actually kind of fun. It was just something different, right? We still had the objectives we had to, um, we had to finish before we could leave that meeting. And this was just a different way to get there. See if anybody has any other thoughts or questions or plans maybe i don't know to help you come up with a way to do this did your team come up with any interesting feedback or excitement um no excitement <laughs> i think we had plenty of excitement yeah we did well that's just the nature of our group you know <laughs> I did think of something while I was flying back from the breakout room and into the main room. You, you could, especially, I mean, I'm always caring about patient assessment and the, the nurse's ability to gather clues from assessment or their, you know, the SPs could hold a clue. That was in um, oh, yeah. our proposal. But uh, with COVID and with everything, we kind of didn't bring it into this semester, but I'm pretty sure we'll be bringing it in once we can actually do that safely and efficiently. Because yeah. that gives a lot more dynamics into what you can do as far as a clue. Right. And once again, it goes back to your objectives, right? Mm -hmm. If you are interested in how they communicate and how, you know, what that assessment actually looks like um, versus just doing it on a mannequin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that could be really helpful. Like they don't get a clue until they finally quit answering mm -hmm. closed-ended questions. Mm -hmm. Finally, mm -hmm. ask mm -hmm. open-ended questions. That's if that's a communication objective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have and um, oh. like um, you know, SPAR or SPR, you know, with um, behavior promoting behavior change when they finally get somewhere. Then the SP throws this E in the air and everybody squeals. I know. I feel like I, you guys missed out on my like, clues, but we'll we'll try. I think there's a couple more, and we have the quiz to get to. I, that's, <laughs> I don't know if we need to do that. I've got a few. If we're, why don't we just go back and finish up and get you guys out of here? I think we've had some decent oh. discussion. Hopefully, you're thinking about how you might be able to use it. And we're almost done. And also just remember, we, um, I, I, I speak for me, but I think I speak for Anne as well. Uh, we're here to help. At, they come up with questions after this. It's not like we're going to shut you down um, much, you know. Well, and the other thing about that is it's, it's not like anything else. It's not necessary to make the same mistakes or, you know, I mean, 
we can speak to some things that didn't work that maybe you don't want to try. So. All right. So what, what clues does everybody have? Anybody? Does anybody have any clues? PPE. <laughs> okay. Good. There was a C and A in the thing. I'm going to give you an idea. The word is right behind me. Well, I saw that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to try to open the, this quiz and see what we can do. All right. So anybody know the answer to locks are? Cheap. No. Good. They are cheap. <laughs> Hard. Hard. Okay. Uh, did you... Anybody? I, I can. Did you accept the mission? Oh. Okay. I didn't. I can't see this. I can't see the. Chat. Oh, okay. Yes, Connie got it. All right. We did. The, this presentation was held. <laughs> Virtually. There you go. Yeah. And the objective was to. <laughs> Have fun. Have fun. Yep. So then, you know, in the original version of this, this is, is actually password encrypted. <laughs> we, we had it at one time. It was all set up. So it would be like an escape room. So you hit it and it would encrypt and it would open up for you. It was awesome. So keep going. Have fun is correct. And that would open for you this fancy. Look at you. You escaped. I'm printing it. Ah. Please do. There, there you go. So, you know, silly. I mean, this is what we do with the students at the end. They get their, they get their certificate. They get their time on it. They, Jerry takes a picture of them with it. You know, it's all just, it's all just fun. And it's kind of amazing how just simple little things like that. And we now have different. this banner. Yeah. And my chain. And we're thinking about other, you know, I talked about the faculty meeting we used it at. We're talking about how can we use it for um, communities. So like when our high schoolers come around and do their um, tours of the lab or do I want to, you know, be in nursing school or go to med school or whatever it is, you know. Um, I think there's lots of other applications if you think about it and don't make it too complicated. So, I think that's, that's what we got for you. So unless you have any questions, um, maybe go ahead. I, I do, if you're at all interested, I, I do think this is a good reference list. So there's our contact info for sure, but um, there are some really good um, references if you want to go there. Some of them are links and some of them are just articles, but um, you know, not just nursing for sure, not just medicine, but um, interprofessionally. Uh, there's the one about actually specific puzzle ideas, which um, we talked a little bit about doing it online. Uh, that could be helpful for that as well. Um, there's one more. One more. Um, the stuff from McGahey, if you're at all interested in um, the whole deliberate practice and mastery learning thing, um, the folks, uh, that book that just came out from Gahey, Barsuk, and Wayne, these guys are at Northwestern and they've done a whole bunch of stuff on um, actually return on investment as far as patient, as well as patient outcomes and stuff. Um, based on central line insertions using um, mastery learning uh, and have had some amazing outcomes. So um, it does work. Uh, that's a great resource. Um, and then that Lairdall escape room workbook has just all kinds of stuff in it. Helps you think about with lists of stuff. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of it really is kind of a hot topic right now. Yep. Good. Okay. I right. think we're I think we're done. Thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah, thanks for coming. Thank you so much.